All right, I think we'll go ahead and, and uh, get started. So our next speaker is, is Dr. Liu from um, Moringer Ingelheim Pharmaceutical Company. Dr. Liu is head of the computational toxicology um, Toxicology at Boringheim, uh, Boring, Boringer Ingelheim. God, why I have a hard time saying that? Uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, non clinical drug safety department. Um, I'm just going to call it BI like you did in your bio sketch. Um, at BI, um, he's primarily um, at the forefront of expanding in silico uh, methodologies for drug safety, safety assessments. Prior to joining BI, Dr. Liu was at the um, US FDA, where he headed the Artificial Intelligence Research Force. And um, notably, uh, he established a standard pipeline employing AI-powered tools to guide the industry in identifying the best approaches to expedite drug development in terms of safety and efficacy. So with that, I'd like to um, introduce um, the title of Dr. Liu's presentation, which is Generative AI Promoting New Approach Methodologies uh, Development. So um, it's really my great pleasure to give this presentation and to introduce the generative AI and its potential for the NAMS development. So I would like to start with the, uh, this House passed the FDA Modernization Act. This actually considered really a big deal. It allows the application of the new drug used alternative methodology and to the animal testing established the drug safety and efficacy. So, and uh, NAMS, I think today, the, all the presenters gave the wonderful presentation about NAMS. It's including like the in vitro cell based IC microphysiological system such as open on the chip and also in silico models, AI machine learning is my focus today. So actually FDA has a, a, a lot of the different paradigms and to promote the NAMS and uh, such example like the FDA pre the roadmap and also the ISTAM program. All this actually is promote the three R's so if you look at and the animal study, as we know, is very time consuming, labor intensive, and also very expensive. Moreover, it's not the fair safe paradigm for the safety evaluation. However, in the current paradigm, animal study is still crucial and for the decision making process. So the question here is whether we could really take advantage of the archived animal studies to develop the new approach methodology to facilitate this process. So I think uh, a previous speaker already introduced some of the predictive models and here I would like to say how from the predictive AI to the generative AI. If you look at this illustration and a predictive AI, pretty much like we have the compounds and the generate various of the different type of the data eventually develop the predictive models for the different underpoint and uh, such as drug induced liver injury, cardiovascular toxicity, so on and so forth. So on the other hand, and the generative model is uh, really want to learn the patterns of the data, eventually generate the experiment data itself and for the untest the compounds. So with this in mind that uh, actually what kind of the uh, generative models could be really used you know, for the NAMS studies, as we see one of the models so-called generative adversary network attracting our eyeball. And if you look at this uh, GAN model infrastructure, it's not that complicated. It's really including two sub networks, one code a generator, another called discriminator. The generator actually in charge and take the noisy and generate the fake image. And the discriminator aims to judge whether the generative the image is really like the real one. After many times of the iteration, the discriminator can know the judge whether the fake image are from the real image. We consider this 
generator could really generate the image. So here is actually a quick example here is uh, we can use these GANS models and to do the first one. And these two and the famous movie star, one is Amy Adams, another one is Nicolas Cage. We can use this model from one face to another. So think about it. You can use this from one face to another. We can use this really from one type of the data to another. So this is exactly the incentive of this animal gun. Animal gun is really try to fully take advantage of the archive animal data to generate new toxicity assessment data for the untested compounds. How to do that? Actually, it's just like I introduced uh, to use this kind of the gun model and the meaning actually to really promote the three Rs. So actually, I just introduced this uh, GAN architectures and to use to generate the image. And you may ask, and how to use this to generate the animal data? So uh, okay. So this is GAN to the animal GAN. Basically, you can consider the input of this animal GAN is uh, the compounds, just like we do the experiment. You have the compounds. You have the experiment conditions, such as the time and dose. You also have the species. And we can put this input to this generator, so-called animal gun, to generate the clinical chemistry and the hematology data. And then this discriminator to judge whether the generated the clinical chemistry and hematology data like the real one. After the many times of the iteration, you tremendous of the data, this uh, generated the clinical chemicality data could not distinguish from the real one. We consider this well-trained animal gun can really generate the experiment data, such as the clinical chemistry and hematology. So how to actually develop this? We need a lot of the data. Here, we particularly use the open TGGate database. This actually including 8,078 rest corresponding 178 compounds, read dosage level, full time points. It's a 28 days and repeat dose study. And for each of the animals, they have 38 clinical pathology testing, which includes and 21 clinical chemistry measurements, such as ALTST, total bilubing, and also 17 and hematology measurements, such as the red blood cell counts. Uh, hemoglobin, so on and so forth. So for the chemical structures, we can use the uh, chemical descriptor to represent that. So here actually is a study design of the animal GAN. You can see we use 80% of the data and to train this animal GAN and used another 20% which corresponding to 1,600 of the rest and to do the testing. When we do the testing, generate the clinical hematology data compared with the real ones to judge how this animal gun works. So here actually is the results, and we use three different measures. One is a root square um, arrow and the cosine similarity, and also overlapped in the TSNI graph. The TSNI basically like the PCA. As you say, the lower MSE, higher cosine similarity is high overlap between the generative data and the real data demonstrate the performance of this animal gun. So actually the question is that we generated that the animal data is really for the risk assessment and how to really use this generative data to do that. So here actually we do a design we use the generative clinical chemistry data compared with the control group. Meanwhile, so we use the real data can compare with the control group. When we generate the uh, risk assessment results, we just compare whether they can generate the same conclusion. Use this way, we can further demonstrate whether this animal gun could be really used and for the risk assessment. So as you see here actually is the results and the, the concordance, we, we just choose the example biomarkers from the hepatotoxicity and the nephrotoxicity. 
you can see for both of them, the concordance level is above the 90.6%. No, 90, 90 this is further demonstrate the high performance of the animal gun. Actually, this animal gun gave us a lot of the incentive and to further use this kind of the gun structure to generate other type of the data. One of the data is the toxicogenomics data. And here is similarly, we use these models and uh, with the different compounds and the treatment conditions and to generate the gene expression data. Once we have this kind of the data, we can further do the mechanistic interpretation and toxicity prediction. So the, the really things, and the, eventually we use the tox gun to achieve this goal. So here actually is a very quick example and how this uh, tox gun and perform. We actually use the generate the uh, gene expression data, carry out the functional analysis, and meanwhile we use the real data do the exactly the same thing. As you see, the green color means and the both uh, gene ontology term enriched by the real data and the generated data. And the red one is for the, uh, the experiment uh, generated data only and the blue one for the real data only. As you see, and the green color occupy the majority of the place and demonstrate the, the generated the transchromatome profiles from the TOS scan is highly consistent with the real ones. So actually, um, there's another question, and uh, we ask once we have this talk scan, we want to do a one more folder. Um, as you see here, um, we probably several years before, and we conduct a study basically called red body map. And within this red body map, we have the 11 different organ systems and carry out the next generation sequencing data across their lifespan. And for both of the study, we have the male and the female rat. This is a beautiful data set to address a lot of the questions. Here, we particularly ask the questions whether we can use this uh, GAN model based on the transformed data from the one organ to produce the transcriptome profiles from the another organ. Meanwhile, so we can ask another question, whether we can from the early stage to foresee the later stage. Even we can ask whether we can from the transcriptal profile from the male rat and to the female rat. This so-called transorgan. So here actually is very quick results. And similarly, you can see this is the lower MSE and a highly cosine similarity and a high overlap in the UMAP space and demonstrate the generative, the transformative profiles is highly consistent with the real ones. So actually move towards another dimensions and here the AI is buzzwords. A lot of the people talk about the large language models and the chat GPT. I think everyone here use that, actually use that every day. And however, you consider and uh, people use this chat GPT like uh, the user provide uh, queries and chat GPT like the GPT-4 provide you amazing results. Actually, it's uh, really far more than that. It's not just a chatbot. It could be achieve a lot of the goal. It's really your personal assistant. You pretty much can use these models to do a lot of the stuff, such as you can brainstorming with him assign the task and use the GPT-4 and the so-called auto-GPT or the meta-GPT. And also you can consider this, this guy is a, is a manager and to resource and the integration and the assignment. Meanwhile, so if you consider this GPT-4 is not perfect for our toxicology, we can further train these models and to know better toxicology knowledge to achieve our goal. So one example here is a uh, vital for evidence, um, uh, especially we currently is popu uh, very popular for the S1B vital for evidence submission for waving the two year rodent animal study. This is very important for the large molecules because for the large molecular, carcinogenicity is not that pop out like the small molecule. 
So, but if you look at the price to do this kind of the submission, and require more than 500 animals per test, lack of the human relevance, and also in total three, four million dollars and per study, course like the three, four, five years. And if you ask the, the CRO to do this kind of the weight of evidence for you, they charge you $100,000 and per submission. So here I quickly give you one example, and this is one real example with weight of evidence for the SGC and the inhibitor. And the top one basically is the writing by our domain experts. The second one is uh, polished by the general GPT-4, and you can use it. And the last one is very interesting, so-called the regulatory GPT-4. We train this GPT-4 a lot of the regulatory documents, let them to understand how the regulatory requirement. But if you look at the, the writing style, I highlight just one sentence and a quick show you. You can see this kind of the regulatory GPT choose the verbiage is quite, you know, accurate and also take the regulatory flavors and for this kind of the submission. Okay, I may just uh, um, go to the take home messages. I, I hope I have convinced you and AI note just uh, all about prediction. And here I just generate, uh, I introduced the generative AIs and uh, to have the great potential to pre promote the three R's and all the three papers, Animal Gun actually, uh, sorry about that, is already published and uh, I think is, uh, you, is, you may see any time in the nature communication soon. And Toxgan is already in toxicological science and Transorgan in the chemical research in toxicology. And also like the uh, chat GPT or GPT-4, we are working extremely hard and uh, towards that kind of the regulatory assistance. So actually, and uh, several works is uh, conducted by with the my previous FDA uh, colleagues. I appreciate Dr. Wade Tong and my postdoc Shi Chen and uh, Ting Li, and also some of the collaborator. And currently at BI, we have the large groups and working. And here I just list some of the leadership and help out this kind of the direction. So with that said, and uh, thank you so much for your attention. And a question is welcome. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for a great presentation. In fact, all the presentations have been very good today, so thank you. I had a question. I mean, this is a fascinating approach, but we're still looking at modeling toxicity to animals' models and animal systems. We have tons of clinical data. Why don't we just go right to the human data? Exactly, this is an absolutely <laughs> fantastic question. Actually, we are currently working on so-called human gun, exactly to generate, based on the accumulated clinical data to regenerate the, the clinical data. So just like the digital twin, as you know, and that's a great approach, but you know, since we are in the non-clinical drug safety department, and we still highly based on the, you know, the non-clinical non species. And also another effort we call the monkey gun, because for the large moleculars, we need a lot of the monkey studies. So that is, as you know, is super expensive. And also now the China cannot conduct the animal study. We have go to the Africa to get the resources. And so there's uh, some potential there as well. Opportunity for the FDA to jump in, I mean, you've got mountains of data. Yeah, no, that's, and I, that's why I call it on. I mean, I think this is an opportunity to just skip the middleman. Or rat. I have one additional quick question. So early on, or somewhere in the mid part of your presentation, you talked about analysis of transcriptomic data using TOX, GAN, and using it both for predictions for mechanism as well as toxicity. And I'm just wondering if you'd comment on which is more accurate. Is it, in general, the, the toxicity or, or mechanism, or are they pretty equal? 
I, I think I, I can note on behalf of the food and uh, and the pesticide, but based on the previous experience, at, at least in the in drug side, I think that honestly, all the toxic genomics is into the exploratory levels. And at FDA, we actually have the biomarker qualification program. I think I'm previously bioinformatics review there. I think it's really have a hard time to really establish this kind of the genomics approach I talk about in the regulatory submission, but it is absolutely a good tool and for the exploratory studies. You can from the genomic studies and facilitate the biomarker de development and also arrange it downstream the bioassays and for, for subtype of the assessment. I think that will be a great tool. So that really depends on how we can position these tools in the right context of the application. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs>